there you are. I was expecting you to show up much earlier this month. I'm afraid most of the good stuff has already been scooped up. As you know, every year I have a good selection of 1920s paper mache. But the collectors were in very early this year and they they cleaned me out of that. However, I have some nice reproductions you might like. Just this morning, a woman came in and she purchased my only cocoa mold witch. I think I gave it to her for quite a bargain. Only $400. Come to think of it, she may have won me over on that deal, but I'm glad it goes to somebody who's going to appreciate it, you know. I have a few more common candy containers I could show you. Nothing as fancy as Kokomo, but Kokomo is very hard to come by, as you know. Oh, let me offer you a treat first. very small selection of candy, but hopefully one of these you'll like. The Tootsie Rolls and also Caramel Apple Pops. So, take one of each or a couple of each, whatever you want. There you go. show you this first item here. So you can see this is a black cat with jack-o'-lantern resting upon her back. We see jack-o'-lantern which is painted Orange. And the back side of this black mechanic container is all black. This was made in the 1950s by the Rosbro and Rosen and Company. You can see that the tail of the cat is shaped as such that it can be used as a holder, possibly. The eyes of the cat are painted orange, as well as the base. These types of containers were used to carry or present candy. Usually they would wrap the candy in a nice colored cellophane to help the presentation. This particular toy has a couple of different variations I can show you in a little bit. Some of these toys were actually unmarked. However, this one, we find the marking on the back bottom of the base, and it says Rosbro Plastics, Providence, Rhode Island. These plastics were produced in Providence during this time. I can offer you this toy for a mere $25.
small defect on this particular one. You can see above the jack-o'-lantern's eye, there's a chip. There's some also chipping around the edges of the jack-o'-lantern. The entire piece is completely hollow and made out of a hard plastic. Newer Rosbro toys are made from a celluloid type of material, which is a little more uh, squishy and not hard like this. Quite something, don't you think? I've always amazed that how small and delicate these types of toys are. Also, how charming. So let me show you some of the variations as well as a couple of the other plastic candy containers that I had that you missed out on. These are some images that I like to save just to give people a good idea of some different variations in these plastic designs. You can see I have a couple of images of coca mold designs. Coca mold is definitely much more expensive than Rosbro, considering that coca mold produced a much more limited number of all of these toys, so they tend to go for quite a quite a pretty penny. Some of these four hundred to six hundred dollars. And here we have a Rosbro Witch on Bicycle from the nineteen fifties. All of these designs I'm showing you were manufactured from nineteen forty six to nineteen sixty. Rosbro produced quite a few of each design. Here are some that are quite interesting. I like this Rosbro cat and the pumpkin cart. There is also a white variant that is a bit more rare, so that one's worth a bit more money if you end up seeing it. Um, if you notice, you'll see that a lot of these designs have wheels on them. And the presence of these wheels adds to the value of the item uh, because these wheels tend to fall off, be a little bit more fragile than um, the designs without wheels. And many of these designs were later produced without the wheels. Now I haven't looked up exactly why that is, but my guess is that these wheels are a choking hazard and they stopped including them for that reason. Now this is the design that I showed you. As you can see, there's four different variations of it. Up here we have a clear pumpkin. This is a pumpkin which is orange on the inside as well as orange on the back. This is the one that I showed you. And then on the bottom is the white pumpkin. I haven't seen this one, but all of these ones are fairly common. So I hope you find that interesting. Now, I'm not sure how old you are, and honestly it's kind of rude to ask, so I won't. So the next item might be nostalgic for you, might not be, so we'll find out. This is a 1986 McDonald's Boo Bucket. So you can see these original Boo Buckets were all orange. And this particular one 
is named Megaboo. A thing is shaped like a pumpkin and is a sort of small size bucket intended for trick-or-treating and carrying candy. It has a nice black handle attached to the side. The inclusion of this handle adds value to this bucket because sometimes this handle goes missing. It features a removable cap which has some small lights on the top and the cap has sort of a design like the size of a pumpkin. McBoo is a jack-o'-lantern with a surprised, maybe you could say frightened expression. I like to decorate with these by using a battery-operated light. All you have to do is turn on the light, put it inside your boo bucket, close the lid, and you have a really Really a charming effect, in my opinion. Someone who is interested in collecting these can have all of them in a row with lights inside for a really beautiful Halloween display. was the first year that McDonald's created their boo bucket and from what I understand they also did a test release in 1985. What I find particularly nice about these buckets and adds to the collector's value is the date 1986 on the very bottom of the bucket. Personally, I love when things are dated by the manufacturer. It adds a lot of value in my opinion and potentially discourages reproductions of the item. So let me show you a little bit more about the boo buckets in my little notebook here. Let's take a look at the McDonald's Boo Buckets. Okay. So you can see that's the one I just showed you right now. Um, and this right here is a screen grab from the original Boo Buckets commercial. And you can see that there's three different ones originally in 1986. There was McPunkin, McBoo, and Mc, McGoblin. The Boo Buckets were one of those rare Happy Meal successes which they brought back year after year after year. In the late 80s, they also introduced some new characters, including a McWitch, and a McGhost, and they also introduced them in different colors. In the 90s, they also had glow-in-the-dark um, buckets, which were kind of cool. Uh, a lot of these earlier ones are really nice collector's items. In recent years, they've switched to more, um, uh, I guess you could say character-based types of buckets with minions or transformer style buckets, but they definitely don't retain this original charm in my opinion. Okay. I wanted to tell you that I drove by your house the other day to admire your abundant display of pink flamingo lawn ornaments. 
they look so beautiful all set up in your lawn and I wanted to tell you to not pay any attention to that foolish newspaper article those columnists wouldn't know an eyesore even if they had pink eye so that's why I wanted to show you this next item you might be interested in This is a 1969 Empire Plastics Corporation blow mold. You can describe this blow mold as a friendly, happy jack-o'-lantern situated upon a haystack. Jack-o'-lantern also is wearing a black which is hat. And the front of the haystack is painted with black vertical stripes. This blow mold is approximately 14 inches tall and is a beautiful addition to anyone's blow mold collection. As I know you collect the pink flamingos and you know the pink flamingo it was one of the first popular blow molds to ever be created. The pink flamingo was created by Don Featherstone in 1957 and really created the blow mold collector's craze. What I find particularly charming about this blow mold is that has a light bulb inside and when you plug it in it looks absolutely fantastic. Let me show you. Here's our jack. Lit up. creates a much more impressive effect of the jack-o'-lantern being lit up above the haystack on the bottom here. I recommend this particular ornament to be displayed inside, especially in this type of vintage condition. You don't want to expose them to bad weather. So, Union Products, as well as Empire Plastics, have the most collectible blow molds currently on the market. They aren't the only blow mold manufacturers, but they are the most collectible. Again, this blow mold is actually dated. It says 1969 on the back. As you know, there are all sorts of different types of blow molds for Christmas, angels, nativity scenes, cartoon characters. Snoopy is one of the biggest collectible blow molds out there. So, let me show you some images in my book. So this is a scan from a book showing the blow mold that I um, just presented to you. As you can see, there's some information about it. That it is an Empire blow mold, and, and it says on there, Empire Plastics Corporation. And here's a couple other examples of different styles of Halloween blow molds. There's definitely a lot by Empire Plastics that have a very similar feel to this one right here. But you can see sort of a character, Hershey's Kiss, something that's very reminiscent of the paper mache style, and also kind of like a standard jack-o'-lantern bucket.
little mark on the bottom here. So, I thought you might find that a little interesting. Next, I would like to show you a early 2000s novelty item. you can see, this is a Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees Twin Lights produced by Mika and this series is called Headlights Hand Painted This set contained a string light of 10 and painted Jason for his lights. They look absolutely stunning when they're lit up. And I can show you that. These were likely produced as a promotional product for either Jason X or Freddy vs. Jason, which both came out in the early. 2000. These types of items are usually highly collectible. Since this is such a long-standing series, people love to collect all the different novelty sort of items that relate to the franchise. And this company, NECA, is a huge producer of these types of items. This NECA company has produced several different types of string lights related to different horror, also rock band franchises. So let me show you some of those. I have some photos. Alright, I just wanted to show you couple of the other string lights that I've seen. So these are all by the same company, NECA, which stands for National Entertainment Collectibles Association. They have dozens and dozens of licensed products available. Just as an example, we see a string lights of the Misfits, which is a rock band. We see Leatherhead from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then also down here we see Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. Some of these are newer um, than the other one I showed you. You can see that this one is dated 2006. And they all are in a similar style. 10 lights. And I believe this is the 
only one that's hand painted. I'm not entirely sure about these two. Though I do know that the Misfits one is in high demand. So if you see that one for under $100, it's definitely going to be a big steal. Like I said earlier, all of my true early 20th century paper mache lanterns were already scooped up by collectors. However, I have this really charming and adorable reproduction lantern I would like to show you. This lantern is designed by the very famous uh, holiday decorations designer, Bethany Lowe. It is a orange jack-o-lantern. It has sort of a distressed style, which makes it look older than it is. And the base is painted a light green. It also has a handle, just as the early lanterns included a handle with it. There is also a paper insert, which has the face design on it. This lantern is very, very, very reminiscent of some of the older 20th century lantern designs. It's beautifully made. Bethany Lowe always does such a wonderful job. And she specializes in vintage and antique designs. And her company was started in 1985. And you always get a very quality piece if you're purchasing one of her items. As always, I like to light these up. And of course, I recommend that you use a battery operated light as any sort of fire and paper is not going to mix very well if you want to keep the paper alive. This design looks the best when you turn the lights out because then you can really see the face come to life. I think you're really going to like this piece if you decide to pick it up. I will, however, show you some of the uh, items that you missed. Some actual genuine vintage and antique items. So let me show them to you. Alright, so let me show you a little bit about some some genuine paper mache lanterns. So let me actually start on this page. Um, these sort of paper mache lanterns actually originated in Germany. And these are some examples of early, not this one, sorry of early German style paper mache. They quickly moved to the United States and uh, we see some common imagery here. The jack-o-lantern, very very common. And then we have the black cat. There's several different black cat variations. This is called the black cat 
that makes sense. And then several different jack o' lanterns. And the rarest imagery we see in these original paper and shapes were the double imagery. And these tend to be more expensive. You could see that the double, um, this particular one, was actually painted from the bottom. You could see this orange paint, which was applied from the bottom. And it creates a really neat effect of having it like an evil lit face. So, here again we see these um, double, the two doubles, as well as the common black cat. This one's fairly common, and I've seen a lot of different reproductions of it. If you are collecting, you have to be very aware of the fact that there are a lot of different reproductions of these paper lanterns. One feature to look for in a genuine paper lantern is the presence of this indentation on the bottom. Now, this isn't the only thing to look for. Um, but it is a telltale sign of a cheap reproduction if it doesn't have this indentation. Um, this should look familiar. It's sort of a uh, reminiscent of the Bethany Lowe I just showed you. Very similar expression. And here is just a variation of this black cat. If you are purchasing these lanterns, you should expect that the inner paper is almost always going to be not original due to the fact that this paper would degrade over time. And a lot of these um, paper machés were exposed to open flames and also hot light bulbs, which would have affected the original paper inserts. That's why I always recommend you use a battery-operated oper light, such as this one, and it has the same effect. There's no reason to use a real flame. So here's a nice little demonstration of German, American, and other different styles here. And again, this looks very similar to the Bethany look that I showed you. So this next item isn't particularly collectible, but I thought you might like it. It's quite interesting. It is a inflatable pumpkin. I like this item because of the very unique expression on the pumpkin's face. It just really that sort of vintage vibe with this expression. Now, the packaging doesn't have a date, neither does the pumpkin. However, if I would have to guess, I would say that this was a late 60s or potentially early 70s piece. Owing to the fact that the packaging doesn't have a barcode, and we know that the barcode reached commercial applications in 1974, so early 70s, potentially late 60s. The color of this inflatable pumpkin jack-o'-lantern is a very bright neon orange. There are red accents, and it's overall a very nice, cute piece. I have not tried to blow this up to see if there are any deteriorations in the seams, but otherwise, it's a good piece and was found in its original packaging. 
I wanted to put the dates in much older than the late 60s, considering that the beach ball was invented in 1938. And these types of novelty items, like Christmas or Halloween beach balls, would not have been imagined until a much later date. I don't have any extra images of this uh, beach ball or beach balls like it, considering these aren't such big ticket items in the collector's market, but I liked it and I just wanted to show it to you. Yes, I caught you on my jack-o'-lanterns in the back here. No, they're not real. They are foam jack-o'-lanterns, but they look very real and I think they're fantastic. So I have one I would like to show you here. This is a 1993 Trendmasters foam looking pumpkin. As you can see, these old Trendmasters pumpkins really had a beautiful, realistic vibe, even on the inside where the cuts of the mouth and the eyes are. Really, truly looks like the inside of a pumpkin. This is a gorgeous piece and looks beautiful lit up. So, let me show you that. Here it is lit up. The only thing I regret to say is that these Trendmasters pumpkins not have a flicker effect to them. If they would have added that, that would have been just gorgeous to have a beautiful flickering flame pumpkin. However, I don't think that was so much on trend back then like it is today. Jack-o'-lanterns and Halloween are like peanut butter and jelly in my eyes. You really cannot separate the two of them. jack-o'-lanterns originally used to ward off evil spirits around Halloween. As we know, the legends say that the veil between the living and the dead is extra thin this time of the year, so I think it's nice to have a few jack-o'-lanterns around to protect your house. I think you're definitely going to want to pick this one up today. I saw checking out my two in the back here. One of these is also a Trend Masters, and the other is a Jemmy, which is another producer of these types of pumpkins, and also other Halloween decorations as well. So, I give you a lovely price. These generally go for around $20 today. And again, like I say, I love 
it is also dated on the bottom so I have a couple images to show you so let's do that okay just wanted to show you some of those glow molds I was talking about earlier um, similar to the Empire Plastics one and then on the bottom here we see that Trend Masters pumpkin this might be the same one that I just showed you even so the suggested price on here says five to eight dollars however I've been seeing them selling at around twenty dollars these days um, so, Trend Masters was an American company. Unfortunately, they're now defunct, but they sold many of these designs uh, back in the 90s. You can find several different variations of jack o' lanterns. You can also find a lot of Casper the Ghost um, light up foam. And scary trees. Um, I've seen an alien one, which was quite neat. There's definitely some more rare ones that go for fifty to sixty dollar range compared to these uh, more common twenty dollar jack o' lanterns. So, if you are into collecting those, I think these are really really neat. Next, I have a few basal H.E. Laurels die cuts to show you. And the first one is this 55 inch life, life size jointed skeleton. Now, the basal company still produces this product and I have a new reproduction to show you just to show the difference between this original and the new one so as you can see this is in the original packaging and my guess is it is around a 1960s age there is no date, however, so it's hard to tell. The one way I am able to determine that this isn't a older basal skeleton is the presence of the copyright symbol on the packaging as well as on the bottom here of the pelvis of the skeleton. That's why I wouldn't say that this is older than maybe the 1970s or 1960s a couple of ways to distinguish this older skeleton from the newer ones is the presence of a factory fold at the neck of the skeleton this was done to make storing much easier there is also a factory fold at the pelvis again so that they can bend for storage. There is a general single colors on this skeleton. It is white, blue, and black. Very simple. And overall, a very classic design. This also comes, I believe, in a 22 inch size version. When we look at the newer skeleton, we see that it is packaged quite differently. There is no longer a factory fold at the neck, and it is also double-sided. 
as the original is only printed on one side. I have one more to show you. This is another basal HE Lewis. And this is from the 1950s. It is a black cat and a top hat with a monocle, is the description. It also has a little polka dot tie. It's very cute yet common design during this time. Many reproductions so you can find this particular one for fairly cheap. It is also embossed so you get a very nice 3D effect if you are seeing this cat. And at a particular angle to the light you get a 3D pop out effect is quite nice. There are some damages to this particular piece. You can see at the top, the top hat, there is a teeth mark, which definitely devalues this just a bit. So now let me show you some images corresponding to these couple of items. Okay. I have quite a few die cut images that I'd like to show you. There are so many die cuts that it's definitely hard to keep up. Okay. So let's see, what do I have here? These are, looks like all basal die cuts. Um, I believe these two are actually quite rare, so they can be hard to find. There are several rare basal and HE Lewis die cuts out there, and other companies that as well now that I'm thinking about it. Um, this company, Basil HE Lewis, is without a doubt one of the most um, prolific Halloween decoration companies out there due to how many die cuts and how popular they were. Uh, they still are producing a lot of their old vintage designs, so you have to be aware of that if you are collecting. So I wanted to show just a couple of skeleton examples. Um, there isn't the one that I showed you in these, in these images, but this was an interesting design with an orange background. And there are some other different types, such as um, this one playing sort of a guitar, and this one, I believe, had some sort of foil covering on it. And this was a much earlier packaging of a 22-inch skeleton. As always, black cats are super popular during this time. There are tons and tons of black cat basil and also this company which is Gibson Designs out there. Gibson was more of a party company. They made party games such as this tongue twister game. Very common. You can find this one on eBay. And there's also these um, die cuts they made also placeholder cards and candy cup folding folding candy cups just a lot of general party supplies again here's some more black cat imagery this looks very similar to the one I showed you but it's actually different and was made by a different company 
you can see by the price down here that it's much higher value and uh, quite a bit harder to find. It says $120 if you couldn't see. And then here's the one that I showed you. And it says on here is from the 1950s. Here's a similar style, just with a jack-o'-lantern and also a witch in front of the moon. There are several different series. I believe there's more in this series than just this one. One of my favorite series I've seen is the Scat Cats. It's a series of four cats playing musicians like they're in sort of like a band. Cute, cute series. Okay, those are all the images I had to share with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have your items over here in a bag that you've selected, and I know you're just going to love them and cherish them for years to come. Come visit me again next year.